the science. The fight is that the blood of a thousand men and women was filled in these laws. Thin, twisted, and broken, eyes gouged from bloody pockets, flesh burned black. Islamic fundamentalists and other unenlightened individuals. Callers and guests may be subjected to brash and offensive comments by the hosts and any other type of bullying tactics available. But that's okay. We know why you're here. This concludes this test of the emergency broadcast system. Tonight is Monday, January 15th, 2007. What's up, gang? This is Jay Scott. You're listening to World of the Unexplained. Um, tonight we have with us Chris Roller. I'm going to talk about him in just a second. Our co-host Trent Lackey will be joining us late tonight, as usual. No big surprise there. <laughs> How's it going, Chuck? Doing all right. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, we've got an announcement to make. We uh, D. Clements is with us tonight. D. Hey. Okay, you probably didn't hear that, but he said hey. <laughs> hey, everybody. All right. D. Clements is our new um, one of our newer newer people. He is going to be running us at a, uh, an affiliate station that I can't talk about just yet until it all goes down probably tomorrow. So next week, you will know. Or you can check our website and you'll find out. I'd also like to welcome to World of the Unexplained tonight our brand new um, affiliate radio station that is carrying us in the Scottsdale, Arizona area. It's KWSS 106.7 FM. If you're listening to us now live in Scottsdale, Congratulations, you've just won. No. <laughs> but uh, KWSS, thank you so much, guys. We appreciate any and all outlets to get our biased and crazy opinions out there into the world. There's too much liberalism going around, and by God, I, I hope not to spread any of it. So, World of the Unexplained, conservative paranormal talk. Tonight we have with us our special guest, Chris Roller. Now, you may know a little bit about Chris. You may have seen him on um, any number of things. He was um, recently uh, depicted on uh, Smoking Gun, the cartoon on Con- or, uh, yeah, the yeah, cartoon Don't Network. Swim. Uh, yeah, Smoking Gun. You saw it too, didn't you? I did see it. That's where I first heard of Chris Roller, and he has sued David Copperfield and David Blaine for using his godly powers. And he also claims that the movie The Truman Show is based on his own life experience. So I'm going to let him tell you about this because (laughs) you've just got to hear it. Call us here if you want to ask him any questions, 877-722-7382. That's 877-SCARE-U2. We're going to bring him on in just a second. I do want to mention one more thing, and we'll get right to the show, and that is the tickets for the Out of Darkness Tour are now available on the website. Go to outofdarknesstour.com, click on the Purchase Tickets link, and you can see the two choices. You have VIP, $75, or the regular admission tickets, 50 That's in Greensboro, North Carolina, June the 9th this year. John Zaffis, Bill Schneblin, myself, the WOTU crew, Al Prophet, Laura Placeras from Full Moon Radio, and many, many more. Teresa Bain. Uh, see, I always forget somebody. <laughs> anyway, so check that out, outofdarknesstour.com. Purchase the tickets. Sign up, guys. We want to see you there. All right, so let's bring him on. Chris, how are you tonight? Good, sir. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on World of the Unexplained. Glad to be here. Tell me about these these guys. Why did you sue David Copperfield and David Blaine for using your godly? What are these godly powers that you possess, and what makes you think they're using them? Well, they're <clears throat> godly powers that are used uh, remotely, or they're, 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 they're sort of hidden. Like, for instance, magicians, they claim it's yeah, illusions. When in actuality they're using God's powers, so I decided that uh, they're probably using my powers. So I said, "Well, I should maybe get some money for this." So I decided I decided to sue them. Okay, so now you're saying that that these are powers that 
that, that they're real. These these tricks are real, is what you're saying. They're not fake. They're not illusions like people think. Correct. I, I suspected it at first, so I, I said, "Listen, you got to show this how you're doing these tricks in the courtroom for me." And and it didn't get that far. But what did happen is that um, uh, in a, in a the, the defense submitted some papers saying that he's got godly powers, but he doesn't have yours. It went to the um, the case went before the judge for dismissal, and it got dismissed. So, it, so I didn't get any money from it. I didn't, I didn't win my suit, but at least I got the information, some information from David Copperfield indicating that he does have godly powers. He just says they're not mine. And there wasn't an employment relationship, so I, that's the way I approached it. Was uh, there was uh, in, in other words, I sued him because he's my he's got my powers. He's he's my employee. Well, that didn't fly with the judge, so I okay. tried to. I tried to go at it with a that he's that this is he's, he's fraudulent. What he's doing is fraudulent. He's he's saying it's a, you know illusions when it's actually real. And so he 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 did claim that the, that they're illusions. There, there's no actual magic going on there. No, he he didn't he didn't say it was a trick. And these current papers are actually online. If you want to go to mytrumanshow.com, I've got him up there stating that uh, he's 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 got godly powers, but that he just doesn't have mine. Well, you know, you know, oh, it, it you. is funny because David Copperfield, what was this about a year ago, six months ago, he said that he had found the actual Fountain of Youth and he owns it. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not kidding you. He claimed that there is a dead leaf that fell off a tree into this lake near some island that he owns, and it miraculously rejuvenated itself. It wasn't dead anymore. It was alive. I, I may have heard this. This tale. I may as well. have told you this. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it may have come from. It here. may have come from. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's so that's. All right, so so now did you file? I'm assuming that you filed these yourself. I don't know of any lawyer that would take the case. Correct. I, I found there's no lawyer that will take. I haven't found it. You know, the lawyers, the judges, they they're not too happy about this whole godly stuff. You know, they're a little bit. Well, I mean, I'll tell you why the lawyers wouldn't take it. It's because they're afraid they'll get disbarred. Probably Rule really? Eleven. Yes. That's, I mean, that, that's my opinion. Oh, what, wasn't that something that was passed in the 90s for frivolous lawsuits? Yes, yeah. yes, and that controls frivolous lawsuits, and a lot of judges would probably come down, and obviously you didn't have luck in the judicial system. Now, tell us exactly what is the what are your godly powers and how did you get them? Did you get them because you, in fact, say that you are God? Well, no, I, um, I believe I was born with them. And, okay. And... Um, uh, gradually, I, I became aware that I had these power. I didn't even know it until '99, and that's when psychically I became aware that I was the True Man in the Truman Show. Um, and when, when did tr- when did Truman Show come out? It came out in '97. That okay. sounds about right. All right. Yeah, I was I was trying to remember. So you 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 figured this out in '99 then? Yeah, it came to me uh, just in my head, and um, um, and r- nobody's. I mean, it's really elusive how it's like the Truman, the Truman Show where the people aren't admitting anything, uh, the actors aren't admitting anything. It's people won't admit uh, that I'm the guy, that I'm the true man in the Truman Show. The, uh, the director won't won't admit it. Um, uh, so, you know, Jim Carrey won't admit it. Who, who directed that? Was it Bruckheimer? Was it Jerry Bruckheimer? Oh, I, I meant to look that up. I forget who it is. Uh, uh, we, we've already got a caller. Wow. Okay. Caller, what, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, caller. Are they, uh, Chuck, oh, you got him on hold. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck put you on hold. I'm sorry. <laughs> what's your name? Where are you calling from? No, I don't know, ma'am. I'm sorry. Hello? Yes? Caller, where, where are you calling from? What's your name? Sounds like they're at a party or something. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> this is great. They just call our number and don't say anything. Cut them off. Cut them off. They're gone. I just cut them off completely. Cut them off completely. All right. Sorry about that. We we thought we had a call. You, you still with us, Chris? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. So now now do you do you believe that you're God or do you believe that you just you were born with these godly powers that were given to you by another god or or are you a demi god or how how does this work? Um, well, it, when it occurred, I, I assumed that I was, in the way my website was written, I was God with the big G, like I'm the God, 
Um, and that's why people are watching me to watch the show. The reason why I call it my Truman Show is uh, is, is um, I'd ask people. I'd ask people when I was finding out that I'm the guy. I was asking like some people, and I'd say, "Well, when when is my Truman Show end?" And they would say, "When you end it." And so it's it's a uh, it's a plan. It's like a it's like a show that God has given me, and it's like a God's plan, and it's given. It's like me. I'm the central figure, and um, it's my show. And so I just I just figured it was I, that I'm God from that. Okay. I, well, no, no. I'm, I'm just. I'm. I'm a little curious. Does that mean that we are all actors in your treatment show? Um. To some extent, like, <clears throat> like for instance, you currently are. Before you you came into my life, you were just a, if you will, like a regular first person. I call them type four on my website. Okay. And uh, when you came into my life, you became type two, which is an implicit actor, which. Believe it or not, you're you're giving me messages, or you're becoming very much a part of my life and part of my show because you've entered it directly. You know, so huh. so for the most part, a regular person listening to this show is is mostly a regular person, type four, and then you know maybe you, the one we've been elevated to level two. That's right, our <laughs> listeners, you've heard it here first. You are now type four. We are type two. We have a call again. Hang tight with us, Chris. Caller, where are you from? Hi, I'm from Kansas. Laura, I knew I'd find you somewhere tonight. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Um, I have a question for your guest. Um, your your statements about um, who you are and um, you know what you're here for are kind of far out. I'm not used to hearing those kinds of things. Do people give you a really hard time for that? For the most part, I'm, I'm sort of quiet about it. But yeah, when I do tell them, they're I don't know about a hard time. They think I'm crazy. But okay. Yeah, I mean, oh, well, well, they well, don't believe it. They well, don't believe it. That's for sure. What would you think if someone came to you and said and made these claims? I mean, just out of the blue, before you had you had figured this out. I'd ask them what the heck they're talking about. And get, <laughs> I'd be very curious. Most okay. people just write me off as wrong and they don't look into any details. But I. I would actually. I'm very curious, so I I would I inquire what they're talking about before I completely turn them down. Okay. And you've never had any psychiatric uh, evaluations or anything? Oh yeah, I'm nuts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least you're honest. What, what have they diagnosed you with? Do you mind me asking? I'm bipolar. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. And so well, do, now, do you take? Bipolar actually isn't a, a, a psychotic disorder, though. I mean, it just. Unless you're in a, a, a pure manic stage, um, there's really no reason to say that you'd be psychotic. Well, in some of the papers I've seen on yeah. doctors, they do mention the word, you know, tendencies of schizophrenia. But, but yeah, I'm declared bipolar. Um, oh, with psychotic features? Yes, that's it, yeah. No, are, okay. are you on any medication for this? Yeah, yeah, it's like... Um, uh, Two, two types of medications, yeah. So you do you do take these? You are you are regulated then? Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you for calling, Laura. Uh huh. Bye bye. All right. That number again: eight seven 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 two two seven three eight two. That's eight seven seven scare you two toll free from anywhere in the United States. And if you're like that guy that listens to us in London, well, you can call again, sir. You have a cool accent. I have no idea how you dial out of country, though. You'll have to call your operator uh, locally: three three six nine nine six fifteen ninety six or eight seven seven scare you two. Um, so uh, I, I want to get back to this 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 whole. God thing. If if you do have these godly powers, now can you do illusions or, or uh, what people would normally call illusions? Can you do things like David Copperfield does, like David Blaine does? No, I cannot. Um, as I understand, people aren't given these powers. Let's just assume that Dave, that David Copperfield it has godly powers. It's just okay. That that's I, fine. It, it's on my website if you want to see that. No, we, we've seen it. Yeah, and that that website is mytrumanshow dot com. So y'all, you guys can check that out there, mytrumanshow.com. You can go right to Chris's website. Um, so you don't believe that everyone's given these powers. You yourself, although you have godly powers, you don't have these abilities to uh, manipulate matter the way they do. 
correct. Uh, I talk about remote powers, like it works remotely, like um, it, it, and it's very elusive too. It, it's not. We weren't the world that wasn't meant to know about godly powers until just recently, you know. And I, I'm I'm the enlightenment. I'm the enlightener, if you will, to uh, to show the way to these godly powers. To and my goal is to maybe eventually make uh, make the earth heaven using godly powers. Okay, that's instead of having have being after you die, you know. Since there's no proof of that, well, I'm I'm going to say let's, let's let's put heaven here on earth. So. So you, uh, you think you think that you're going to bring heaven on earth? Yeah. I, I'm the Savior, and I realize that most of your listeners are probably uh, think Jesus Christ is. That's because he is, Chris, but that's okay. We'll get to that in a little bit. I don't usually launch in on my guest until at least the first half hours past. Okay. <laughs> I, I let you have free reign for the first 30 minutes anyway. Otherwise, they think I'm, they think I'm bad. Uh, I want to welcome Trent Lackey into the studio with us. He just got here. He's my co-host. Yes, I have returned. <laughs> Say hi to Chris Roller. Chris, hey, this Chris. is Trent. Hi. Um, well, anyway, we've been talking about that, godly powers, and he has sued David Blaine and David Copperfield, saying right. that they used his. And what he's saying that he, I just asked him the question: Can you, uh, you know, can you do the same kind of types of feats they can? Can you manipulate matter in the same ways? And he says no. We, however, it's good to know that we have been moved from a type four, which is like a person on the outside peripheral, to a type two in his life. What is a type one, Chris? I'm curious. Is that just you? Explicit, explicit actors like. And it's it's sort of rare, but um, the CIA and FBI, I would say, they're explicit actors. Okay. Um, but even they barely interact in my life. They're these people who are like in on it. Okay. You know, um, rarely interact with my life. Um, and if they do, they the tendency is to shift to type two. In other words, they become implicit actors um, through a thing I call re, uh, memory reravel. In other words, they they come in thinking they, they got it all going on, and they know what's going on, all of a sudden they become a type two. They become implicitly, they just a game of life, to God's plan will automatically recast them into a, a new role, if you will, giving me, given, in other words, they thought they were coming in with some a few lines, and it turns out it was different lines. So, pretty weird. Okay. So Now, now how, how did you, if you... If you're the savior, supposedly, and you're going to turn this world into heaven on earth, how is that possible if you're not the God with a big G? Well, I mean, I how, how do you think with with Jesus Christ being the Lord and Savior, being the Savior, that's, he was a human, he's going to be the Savior, I guess, in the same role, I'm human, and I'm going to be a Savior, too, or... Well, we'll see. Yeah, it's, but it's a Christ was also <laughs> Christ murdered. was also, but Christ was also God though before he became the human God in the flesh. Well, yeah, but he was also according killed. to what according to what the Bible tells us. So anyway, we'll get on that later. Yeah. Uh, so so you you think though that there is a being above you that is God? Um, there is a plan in place, God's plan. I call it, or the game of life. I talk about it's kind of syn- same thing, syn- synonymous, and. Um, it's directing me and each and every one of us in a, in a way that put, put us in a path in life. I think we all kind of uh, got that feeling that that happens. Uh, I believe that since I'm, I believe I'm the central figure in this thing. So if I am, and and I, I then assume the roles, maybe take the reins of being the, the liaison in this plan, in God's plan, the game of life, and maybe uh, thus I am God with the big G. But in the meantime, I'm a God. Okay, are there are there other gods? I don't think so. But would it surprise you if you found someone? It'd be interesting. Okay, if anyone can find them, Chris, we'll be able to. <laughs> Let me show you eight seven 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 two two seven three eight two. Call with your questions here eight seven seven scare you two or locally three three six nine nine six fifteen ninety six. Go ahead, Trent. Do you have something for him? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I'm jumping right into this whole David Blaine, David Copperfield thing, and I know we ought to. Well, we, can, dedicate, we, can back, we can backtrack. Yeah, we haven't talked much about uh, it. But uh, basically, I mean, you're saying that they had stolen some of your godly powers. Now, how how did they do that? And then the follow up question would be: 
assuming that they did, wouldn't that make them godlike or demigods themselves? You sure? Would, yeah, I mean, they could, they probably could have claimed themselves as a god, but they decided not to because they've been. The way I've got, the way I approach the, the suits and sued them is that they've been hiding these powers, trying to keep money from my pockets because they knew that I'd eventually show up to come forward and claim to be God, and they were keeping it quiet this whole time and making money. Make, you know, Copperfield makes you know millions of months, fifty million a year, so probably made over a billion dollars in his lifetime, and and you know he's going to keep quiet about uh, you know, and it's. If he were to come forward and say that he's uh, Jesus or whatever, he probably people probably call him crazy like that. What happened with me? And to that to that caller that called in, I I was only diagnosed bipolar in '99 when I first became aware that I was the True Man and Truman Show and talked to a psychiatrist about this. And they within five minutes they uh, declared me bipolar. So it's pretty easy to become bipolar. All you gotta just say is you're you're the second coming. And, and <laughs> that does <laughs> tend to make one one doctor. Uh, Flinch, I yeah, assume. that's a step up that's from the trigger button. yourself, Napoleon, for example, <laughs> right? But wow, wow! Hmm. But he says he is on medication. Now. I didn't want to oh, point okay. that out. Oh, that's good. Um, wow, that's all I gotta say. And uh, he also claims that uh, that once again, this this thing was something that he had to file himself. None of the attorneys would take it. Now, do you believe that these the judges and all these people are working together with the CIA and the FBI and these organizations to hold you down? Mm. I wouldn't say that. No, I, did I say that? I don't think I said that. Um, you, you did. not I'm asking. Uh, no, I, I. I wouldn't say that judges are holding me down. They're just. They're just not taken by what I'm doing. You know, lawyers. They nobody. Nobody wants to deal with this stuff. Um. So I, I sort of become my own my own lawyer. They call it pro se. Yeah. I'm doing my own. Uh, I'm act. You know, I'm actually in. Uh, online law school right now. I'm kind of curious about this lo- lawyer stuff. I decided to go to law school. So really, it, it, it's awful, isn't it? it? It's kind of tough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I graduated from law school last December. It was not fun. <laughs> where, where are you going to school at? It's in uh, California. It's an online law school. Okay. Okay. Now you do re- you do realize that that you can't you can only practice in California if you if you graduate from a, an unaccredited ABA law school. That that's yeah that's correct. Yep. Are you planning? Are you planning on moving to California and practicing there, or possible? I can also practice in the federal system. Without... Yes, if you if you have a license from California, that's correct. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Um, well, good luck with that. It's it's uh it's a tough that is a tough track, my friend. I will I will say that. It's a it's a lot of uh, a lot of crap to put up with. <laughs> and yeah. California has one of the hardest bar exams in the nation, so it, it is a very uh, it's a tough trip. Okay. So I myself have, have failed this bar exam out here twice. So I'm going back for round three in February. And if ding, I can't, ding. yeah, if I can't make it, I'm moving. I'm <laughs> just, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving it behind. Wow. Yeah, it's, wow. it's, it's kicked my butt. It's kicked my butt. But uh, you know, you know, the website is mytrumanshow.com. That's www.mytrumanshow.com, and you can click on there, and you can find out all you need to know about Chris Roller there. And you also do it. You have another business that you link in with that too, some kind of internet company. Is that correct? Yeah, ObjectForce.com. Okay, what what does that do? I sell I sell um, uh, shareware on the internet. Um, people download and then run it, and then decide to want to buy it within thirty days. Okay. Okay. Oh, is that so? That's what. What is what was that website again? I'm sorry. Objectforce.com. Objectforce.com. Or ChrisRoller.com. It'll get to the same spot. Okay. Hmm. Now, go ahead. Did you have something? Uh, no. Uh, well, we're almost there break anyway, so I'm going to hold off. Okay. Well, we got four minutes before we take our first break. Now, let's. Uh, this Truman Show concept. Have you tried to litigate against the people in the Truman Show? Have you Have you tried to sue the producer? I mean, the director or the writer or or any of the actors? I did look it up. It's Peter Weir is the director, and I thought about it. Maybe, maybe you know something that, that I should. I I thought about. it. I said, you know, um, can I get some money? If, I'm I'm like poor, right? I'm I'm in. We the, all are, uh, <laughs> brother. I tell you that. <laughs> but uh, to that call to that caller, I'm actually on a disability for, for mental illness. So that's my that's my main income. So wow. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty poor, and 
considering moving in with my parents here just to save some money anyways I, I can I can understand that what what now you have kid did, weren't you married before don't you have children now yeah I was married for 15 years I have two uh, two kids a boy and a girl and now are 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 they what do they think what what does your ex-wife think about this Truman show thing um not too tolerant of it this whole God concept not too tolerant she doesn't believe anything you know neither does my mom and um you know they you know, they could live with the fact that the site was never existed in the first place. But um, here I am. I, I figured it's a story. I'm trying to actually market the thing to for for produce a TV series of some sort. You know, um, similar to Smallville, or you know, kind of a my show has progressed. The way my my life has progressed has been kind of a gaining powers and this in knowledge in stages. You know, I figured I might as well make a series out of it. You know. Now, what, what exactly, what, good. what powers do you have? What can, what, is, is there any, any particular power that you have uh, that you would, you would ascribe godly powers to that, that you could do something spectacular or super ordinary? Well, the powers work remote, and the way the God's plan works is it's, it's elusive as far as being able to get proof of anything in the godly nature. For instance, magicians are barely even to... Admit, barely will it barely admit to having godly power. So, as far as the way it works for me is that everything works remote and it works very elusively and very hard to prove. Um, when I I have a site called wishmission.com, which I I grant wishes. I was doing this mostly in in uh, 2002 when um, I decided to put my my, my truemission.com up. I made this site wishmission and it's basically you, you put up a group, you check it out. You can <clears throat> you can type in like, I'd like this, you know. And so I'd I'd snap my fingers and I try to make it happen. And I tell them about an email, and and I got a couple responses back saying that it worked, you know. Uh huh. But I, what I realized is that if it if it was working, then they could admit it, and that's just a weird, bizarre phenomenon. That and that um. We're not quite ready right now. The world isn't quite ready for the realization of godly powers. In that sense, it works. It works through elusive manners, like um, I believe in well, for magicians. For one thing, I I believe that scar removal is is a god force. Um, um, Every Halloween at midnight, the devil simultaneously appears in two places. The high plains of India, in a quiet cemetery in Kansas. It's November 2nd, the Day of the Dead. Two federal marshals report to the small town of Shinbone, Kansas, moments after a tornado warning, to transport a prisoner with no past, no identity. He is known only as Sin Jin Smith. Starring Roddy Piper, Richard Tyson, Jonathan Davis, Kevin Gage, Gary Casper, John Vilbin, Billy Duffy, Charles Cyphers, and Eileen Dietz. Check out the movie that critics are calling one of 2007's most anticipated horror films by visiting www.sinjinsmith.com. That's www.sin-jinsmyth.com. Sinjin Smith is a Snapkick Productions film written and directed by Ethan Dettenmeyer. Coming soon to a theater near you. And we're back to World of the Unexplained, Chris Roller. Guys, if you want to call in tonight, the number is 1 722 7382. That is 1 scare 2 Or locally, 336 996 1596. And don't forget to hop into the chat room and ask a question there if you're phone shy, which we. Yeah, we, yeah, we accept, but you know, we would prefer you. We prefer you, you to call in. in. And, uh, yeah, uh, I was going to say that the oh. chat, the chat room, you can get there by going to worldoftheunexplained dot com, and then clicking on the chat button, making up a username and password, and you can just jump right on in with us. Yep, that's exactly right, Chris. I, I, I have a question concerning this godhood thing. Um, one of the things that deities seem to possess. And it could be Judeo Christian God or any God in any theology or religion is omniscience. That is to say, all knowing. 
you know, knowing everything that's going on at all times. Now, um, showing that you're a, a deific power that, that you claim to be, do you possess this omniscience? And if so, is that what led you to realize that the Truman Show was made out of your life through well, deific I do not omniscience? Be, I do not claim to be all-knowing. Um, uh, and that's just, and, uh, you know, I gain knowledge every day, but <clears throat> to have all knowledge, you know, one time is would I think that I it might that might be a myth uh, that that might be a, a lot to ask of a god, much less the god uh, with the big G. Um, but um, I understand that's a uh, that's the present day dogma that God is all knowing. Um, so no, I'm not all knowing, and that. But as far as the Truman becoming aware of the Truman Show, um, it sort it sort of it was sort of like that. Where it, oh, one day, one morning, I woke up and and um, actually my internet was cut off and my phone was not working, and it was I realized that um, that for some reason that triggered it to realize that I was the Truman and the Truman Show, that I'm that. People were people were interfering or monitoring my email and my web my internet connection and my uh, playing tricks on it, if you will, if you will. The CIA is playing has played tricks on my internet access um, many times, and that's sort of what, what triggered it in the morning that I realized I was a Truman Show, Truman and Truman Show. Uh, all, uh, the all knowing portion as far as uh, it was. It took a, a number of months to, to to become fully aware of. Like, I should have psychic abilities and and um, um, the the other the other things that I mentioned on my website, which is sort of a progression. Um, Did you ever see any? Um you know, the smoking gun, for example, I mean, your internet goes off, I mean, anything really could cause that, I mean, what about, oh, you know, somebody who's really close to you in your life, you discover that they're an actor or something, I mean, was there any other kind of, <clears throat> you know, evidence concerning the people around you who were being paid or, or some such thing, I, I don't know, um, you tell me. Well, it was, when I become, when I became aware of it, I, I can remember this one incident, and I, uh, got on the bus and I sat down next to a stranger and I said you know when is when's my Truman Show going to end and she said when you end it she automatically she's like it's like she automatically knew what I was talking about well I mean there, there was a, a, a megally successful blockbuster film called The Truman Show okay yeah I mean that's true uh, <laughs> well I mean, I, I, I could see how someone would use it this, as, as an adjective like that. I, you know. Yeah, I guess, I guess so. Did this happen before or after the show, the movie came out? It was after the, after the movie came out. So, I mean, yeah, you're right. They, they could have made a reference, understood where I was coming from. But, um, I mean, I did that a few times, not just with, with one, but a few times. And, I don't know, it's just, um, I would have called that... Um, that person type at the time I would, have, I would have thought for sure she was type one an explicit actor you know working for the CIA or something and then I, she was told to, to say that but what I realized later on uh, it, took, it, then it took months to realize that there's people who I think are are in on it like even my mom I thought she was in on it for a, for a long time and I would I would say listen you know you're in on it, just confess, you know, and I realized later that she wasn't, <laughs> that she was, that she was type, type two, that she would venture into my world and say these unexplainable things to me and, and then venture back out and, and be a regular person again, you know? Yeah. Um, so it happened. Uh, and I thought, I thought everybody was type one for a long time, you know? Well, now, now let me ask you a question. What is this I hear about you and Bill Gates running for president together in 2008? Yeah, freakinggeek.com, and I'm the, I'm the freak and he's the geek. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> I'm sure Bill's happy about that. <laughs> All right, so so anyway, freakinggeek.com. Now, you, you say he sent you an email. 
Yeah, in, in 2004, I made up a website saying Let's, we're going to run for president, and I was thinking we're going to run for president in 2004. That didn't happen. Okay. I never heard from him, but then uh, just after the election, a month later, I I got an email, two emails from him saying, you know, I'm ready to announce my presidency, our presidency in 2008. So the site indicates that, and, and um, I have yet to get a, a cell phone call from him. I gave him my number and everything, and something either keeps him from emailing me or, I, I mean, call, calling me again or emailing me. Um, as far as 2008 is happening, well, we're going to see, wait and see. I've become very patient, as you can imagine. As you can start to imagine, uh, 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 I expected a lot of things to unfold uh, back in 99 when I became aware that I was streaming and Truman Show. I thought it was all going to end, and I would have this uh, uh, host of ladies, I call uh, ladies uh, sort of a polygamy thing, in which I can meet with a bunch of ladies. I thought everything was going to unfold back then, and I'd be getting laid like left and right, but <laughs> nothing, nothing has happened, so I've be, I become, I become very patient. Maybe maybe you should consider starting a rock band. I hear it's good for that. <clears throat> Mine doesn't work for me, but I I hear that's good for that. <laughs> I'm, jo- I'm joking, yeah. Chris. Um, what? So now, how do you know that this email came from Bill Gates? Um, that's true. I mean, that's you got a point that it could have been some kind of hoaxer, but um. Did, I mean, did Bill Gates personally pick up the phone and call you about it? I no, mean, okay. that has not happened yet. Um, so it could have been a hoaxer, but I believe it was him. It came from uh, the Hotmail uh, Hotmail account, so he owns that. I anybody could I know anybody can make up a yeah yeah name Bill on Bill Gates at Hotmail dot com or something like that. There's a lot of uh, email scams involving oh, Bill yeah. Gates. Oh yeah, oh uh, yeah. You you guys remember the notorious one? Try our new email system, and we'll give you money. Do you guys remember yeah. this? Yeah. Or Bill Gates had to give away so much money. And... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I tried it. I mean, did I knew really? I knew it was a scam, but I did it. I figured, what the heck? <laughs> you, <know, right? laughs> you, yeah, you chump. Yeah, that's why all of our computers have viruses now. You can thank me. No, no, I'm kidding. Eight seven 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 two two seven three eight two. We're speaking live with Chris Roller tonight about godly powers and all kinds of things. And here's where it gets interesting, and and uh, we get a little bit more hostile. We're going to debate now. <laughs> I, I've been waiting tonight. I've been patient. Yeah. Well, I've been pulling <laughs> pulling the punches. <laughs> now you said that your bite his teeth into this. Exactly. Yeah. Now you said that your your mother was listening tonight, so um, I hope she'll forgive me. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, uh, let, let's let's talk a little bit about this. You were raised in a you know in a Christian environment. I'm assuming is that correct? No, I, I was not raised in a Christian environment. No, um, my mom was. My mom was a devout Catholic, and um, and it was when. She, I mean, she, you know, I, I, I say she could have been a nun had she not wanted a family. So, um, but what happened is that she had six kids in seven years, and it really wreaked havoc, wreaked havoc on her body. And I can understand. She, yeah, she started questioning. You know, what, what, what have I been listening to all these years that you can't use birth control? You know, the rhythm method was not working. Let's just say. <laughs> it rarely that's, does. That's that's yeah. why I'm not Catholic. But you know. <laughs> And if you listen to John Daniel coming on soon, he'll tell you the reason he's not Catholic is because the Catholics are behind the uh, conspiracy to bring back the Antichrist. But that's yeah. for another day. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you, you know, I, well, you know what I want to know, though, is, is you know, you, you, th- you say you're God and all this. Well, you know, well, the, the whole Jesus thing and, and the whole Bible thing. That's what we're calling him for now, because I don't have any other words that I can use right now. But, you know, the, the Bible... Practicing your eloquence. Exactly, again, exactly. But the Bible and Jesus and all that stuff, there's actual proof there. You can look back in the Bible and you could find these prophecies in the Old Testament that were fulfilled over, you know, fulfilled over time. Not to mention the numerous miracles that were clear and apparent. And, and I'm just asking for, from, you know, from that respect, you know, you can compare yourself to Christ and say, well, you know, people ridicule me or people... Uh, uh, you know, don't believe me or this, that, and the other. But where is your proof, Chris, that, that you're that you're God or that you possess these, that well, you're a savior? Okay, as far as proof that I'm God, it's elusive. Um, it's on the website. It's right at the very top. It says, you know, if you're wondering if I'm really God, here there's a link that says, click here. Now, I've noticed there's a poll there too, saying, what do you think? What have your poll results? <laughs> what have your poll results told you? I, 
belong in a straight jacket. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Not a lot of fans. There. <laughs> do you have followers? Do you have uh, do you have people that that, that worship you? That, that call you? That email you? That write you? Um, I have um, I have no fan base. I have no worshippers. I have a, I have fans, but not worshippers. No. Oh, okay, okay. But going back to my question, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to to interrupt your train of thought. But yeah, G- Jesus. They thought Jesus was was nuts too. You know, they yeah. they thought he was nuts. Some people did. Yeah, that's a and fair assessment. You know, crazy. He was, thought he was crazy. Anyways, so. But what I'm saying is Jesus was out there performing miracles in front of people. He was uh, he was putting on a show for these people. He was showing them that, hey, look, I do have this power, and here it is. You know, I, I just don't see see the, the connection there with, with what you're doing. I mean, it would be different if you were going around saying, you know, I'm going to go heal this sick kid of cancer, or I'm going to go and uh, make water into wine, or, you know, what, be what out. Yeah, you know, be whatever like that. I mean, what what is, you know, what is what is that? Where do you stand on well, that? Um, you know, the, the proof that I am that I am God is um, uh, okay. One second. Um, okay. Have something here. Um, um, cop. I took up. Anyways, Copperfield and Matthews got godly powers. So we're we're now finding out that godly powers exist on the planet. Well, exactly where did they come from? Right. It. You know. You got to ask. Well. Who's given these powers if he's got them? Well, what I, what I, I have to ask who, who, who's given Copperfield the godly powers, for one. I mean, how do we know that Copperfield's not telling us a story? Well, I mean, it's a legal document, so... Uh, well, I know of a lot of legal documents that I wouldn't consider true. <laughs> Come on, you're in law school. You've, Commission. You've seen, you've seen some of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, the Warren Commission for one. Definitely. One definitely comes to mind. The judge could have thrown... The judge was going to throw out that case anyhow, but... They, so all the defense had to admit was that it's just a trick, Chris. Leave us alone, and the yeah. judge would have still dropped it. But no, they admitted it was godly. Take, I mean, take a look at the documents. Up, it's right on the site there. I mean, they, they could have said anything like, "This is just a trick, Chris. Please get out of our hair." You know, we request dismissal. Judge request grants it. You know, so it's over. You know, and I uh, have no proof. Honestly, but, though, I'm, I'm surprised Copperfield's people didn't give you a little cash just for the. The extra publicity. I mean, let's face it; he's not exactly the sellout show anymore since Chris Angel came along. Mm. Yeah, he's doing some stuff, man. Yeah, did, did you? Oh, did you sue Chris Angel? D told me. No, that, no, no. Oh, no, okay. no, I thought. I. Oh, you because, thought about uh, it? Because it failed with um. <clears throat> David Blaine and David Copperfield. I I just decided to hold off on that and try some other avenues. But uh, you gotta you gotta wonder about the the Chris Angel thing. I call myself. He calls himself Mind Freak. Chris, yeah. he's Angel. I usually call people that are associated with me my my angels. Um, I call myself Freak, and I use my mind. And, you know, it's very, very, very close. In, in other words, might a judge, a judge might actually grant me some money if I actually sued the guy, but I've just, I've, I, uh, I, I haven't really gotten to that point yet. Okay, now, now I'm, you know, we've got the lines here open. If you guys want to call 877-SCARE-U2, uh, it's toll-free. Or if you want to call in locally, 336-996-1596. The lines have been fixed now, by the way, from last week. Um, anyway, so if you've tried calling the 800 number before and gotten um, a strange answer, well, that'll, yeah, it, it's, it, that's it's fixed happened. now. That's fixed. But uh, now <laughs> I understand from your site here it says that you – um, in two months, you learned how to live in and not just see the past and the future, not but me, but my angels, okay? Um, how to understand timelines and its modification, how to grant my power to others, how to experience the fourth dimension of time, how to understand the spirit and bring back the dead, how to, uh, the understanding that I was holding living spirits, not just dead ones, um, the, how to grant wishes and understand many things. And and it, later on in the site it says that you can cure things like cancer. This, now this is coming from uh, one of the chat room people that we've got up here. How, so they they want to know how do you cure cancer? Oh, oh, Jay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> um, you, I just snap my fingers and it, it happens. But here's the deal. Um, again, it's not quite. The Earth is not quite ready for this realization yet. So you can do it. You just it, have to be secret about it. It has to be secret about it. In other words, the, the realism, if there's any realism to it, it can never get back to me. And it's just a rule until, until for a while, 
you know, I'm guessing 30 years, something like that. Uh, and it'll just be a progression, slow progression of, you know, bull crap about this godly power stuff to eventually Chris Roller finds out that David Copperfield has godly powers. Boom, we've, we've now set a reality level of, wow, okay. You know, and this is now earth-shattering revelations here, okay? We've got, we've got something good to go on. So from there, we finally get these magicians to admit it, to admit it fully on 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 on, on TV or something. You know, there's a progression that says, okay, and then finally we get to an acceptance, and then we uh, acceptance of godly powers, and then we start maybe flying around with with flying cars in say 10, 20 years, and then eventually we'll bring back the dead, your 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 parents, your grandparents. No, no, we're 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 the dead now then. They're in spirit land, and they just they're just hanging out. Just hanging out until um, I don't believe there's any heaven up there, in nor hell. Okay. It's just they're hanging out, and eventually we bring them back. Uh, uh, so do you do you think they're in another yeah. dimension? Is that, is that what you're saying that we can't see or feel or hear? That's yeah, I believe yeah, another dimension, another yeah realm, whatever. Um, I believe that some some of these psychics can sort of uh, at times re- hear what they're saying. You know, John Edwards perhaps not. He's not. As far as accuracy, it's probably not too accurate, but... Uh, that's because he's a fraud, Chris, but that's okay. <laughs> I, believe, I believe occasionally he's uh, on the money. It's just that it's the way it works, the game of life and get God's plan is that... Uh, Good cold reader. There's there is very little... Um, it's, you can't be accurate that often. I've seen magicians be very accurate, though, when, when they're reading minds. Now, Chris Angel, especially. Chris, I usually, I usually... I'm usually pretty harsh and sometimes downright mean to people on this show and I, I, I'm not going to be that way to you because I, I really do feel I, I will pray for you sir and I'll leave it at that uh, it, it's just it, it really uh, wow I, I, you know that's the thing I'm asking is why do you believe these claims because you can't you know I don't see any any substantiation of them and you're saying well if, if it's a power that I have to wait on and if it's something that's going to bring itself to fruition later on down the road, and then, you know, hello, the whole world's going to know, then why are you telling us about it now? Isn't that kind of breaking your own rule? Oh, kind of a, kind of a good question. I wish I could be patient, you know. Um, um, again, I'm, I'm trying to use the website. If I can't gain any credibility from it, at least maybe I can make a movie out of it or a TV series, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think it's, uh, heck, I think it's entertaining. That's why we invited you on the show. Yeah, I mean, it's, and, and as far as suing people, um, geez, I'm just, I'm I'm poor, man, and I'm, I'm just looking for some money, you know? And I figure, what the heck, let's give it a shot. And it turns out I struck gold when I, even though I didn't get any money from David Copperfield, I struck gold as far as finding out these guys powers. I mean, that's, that's like money in itself. I'm, I'm actually suing. Uh, I've got a lawsuit in the process with James Randi right now for for a million dollars. I've heard a lot of people tried to sue him. He doesn't mm-hmm. seem he doesn't seem to want to tender the part of his bargain, the million dollars he promises. <laughs> are, you, are you guys familiar with this, Trent? Are you familiar uh, with this? No, Randy Randy, not. Randy is a is a um, he is a skeptic, and he claims that if anyone can do anything supernatural that he can't prove as a fraud, then he'll give you a million dollars. Well, lots of people have challenged him, and he's never paid out. Probably is not going Yuri to Yuri Geller out. was one of the people that challenged him. Really? And he claimed that he knows how Yuri does it. And Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's a he's fairly famous guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I, I do remember it. He he, he was a he was an illusionist himself. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, do you think do you think the reason that he's not paying out is because he also possesses these godlike powers? Do you believe every illusionist has these powers and all use them, or do you believe some of them actually use tricks, while others, the few and far between, may have the godly powers, Chris? Well, James Randi is a magician, you know, and, yeah. and I believe that uh, I believe he's running a scam. I believe he knows he knows about the David Copperfield thing, and he's just running a, he's running a little a gimmick here. And um, have have you talked? Power, I'm sorry. Have you talked to to James Randy personally about this? Um, we've emailed each other. I told him I was God, and he thought I was a juvenile. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. Those are the exact words. Anyways, 
Um, <laughs> and uh, I said, that, listen, I showed him my document, and I sent him an email. I said, listen, I got this document here. It says, Copperfield's got godly powers, you know. I want the money, you know. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't respond. So I figured, and the way his, the way his, uh, his, his contract is written up, it's, um, there's a item number seven on there says that uh, if we can, after we've signed our, signed our statements, submitted to this thing, we can't sue him. So I realized that we got to play by his rules. Otherwise, if we, we go into his rules and we can't get any money from him, if he, he it's basically he decides whether you yay or nay. And I'm like, bull crap, let's take this to the front of a judge, you know? Yeah. And uh, let's, let's let him decide what's, uh, if I've won or not, you know? Chris, um, <clears throat> if you have deific powers, then there's a couple of things that I'm curious about. Number one, why don't you just m mystically create an oil field underneath your house or, um, you know, all of a sudden you discover a gold mine or influence the judge's minds to in your favor? I mean, why don't you use these deific powers to gain this money that you, that you talk about wanting to get? I why mean, don't you remote view the lottery? Yeah, remote view the lottery, any number of things. Right. Oh, good question. I mean, it, no, I'm really good question. Um, again, I go back to this, this, this um, remoteness, this elusiveness of reality in my life and godly powers, and the confirmation of it. It's it's so elusive that I can't make any food. I can't make turn water into wine. If I could, I wouldn't have to go to the grocery store anymore. You know, um, um, believe me, I, if, I wouldn't have to sue anybody if I could make up my own, if I could cast, uh, cast myself a gold mine in front, in front of me. Um, it, it always comes back to, I'm, I'm working under this thing called the game of life, God's plan. And right now, getting any proof of godly powers is extremely elusive and I'm, I'm working on it and I uh, I'm doing my best you know I, I'm trying to figure out the best way of if you will ending my show at least getting to that level in which I um, in which I, I can say listen at least this chapter's ended and I'm now getting I'm, I'm now seeing these ladies I call my babes uh, if you will these I have some ladies from that in 99 they said okay these ladies have been waiting for you I call them my babes, and uh -huh. um, they basically, the idea is they're supposed to have a, have a kid by me. Okay. And, and the sh my, that, chapter, my, that chapter would have ended had it not been for the fact that I could immaculately conceive uh, children. Uh, so that's what started happening. I know I have a, over like something like two million kids. You've been immaculately conceiving children? For two years, yeah. Oh my God! All right. I mean, I mean, I mean for six since '99. All right, we, we've got to come back to this, but right now we've got to take a break. <laughs> I'm going to leave one quote here from uh, Bono of U2. And who knew I would ever <laughs> quote him on my show? But yeah. that's my God ain't short Those of cash, guys, Mister. Mr. Right. I and was, uh, I was we'll just be, saying the same thing. Right we'll on be, home. Uh, yeah, we'll be right back here on World of the Unexplained with Chris Roller. Please give us a call here eight seven seven scare you two or three three six nine nine six fifteen ninety six. We'll also take your questions. Boswell. UFOs, flying saucers, alien abduction, are we alone? Information regarding this and many other questions about the unknown are only a click away at www.theufostore.com. The UFOstore.com offers hundreds of DVDs about UFOs, aliens, crop circles, conspiracies, Bigfoot, suppressed science, ancient mysteries, and the latest DVD releases like Dan Aykroyd, Unplugged on UFOs, and the Alien Files 5 DVD set. The UFOstore.com also offers the book Roswell, It Really Happened by Jesse Marcel, one of the last survivors of the Roswell UFO crash that examined the spacecraft wreckage in 1947, revealing its hidden secrets. Log on to www.theufostore.com and request a free UFO store catalog. To receive a free catalog by mail, call 541-523-2630. That's 541-523-2630. Theufostore.com, the largest selection of UFO products on the Internet. Every Halloween at midnight... The devil simultaneously appears in two places, the high plains of India, in a quiet cemetery in Kansas. It's November 2nd, the Day of the Dead, 
Two federal marshals report to the small town of Shinbone, Kansas, moments after a tornado warning to transport a prisoner with no past, no identity. He is known only as Sin Jin Smith, starring Roddy Piper, Richard Tyson, Jonathan Davis, Kevin Gage, Gary Casper, John Vilbin, Billy Duffy, Charles Cypress, and Eileen Dietz. Check out the movie that critics are calling one of 2007's most anticipated horror films by visiting www.sinjinsmith.com. That's www.sin-jinsmyth.com. Sinjin Smith is a Snapkick Productions film written and directed by Ethan Detmeyer. Coming soon to a theater near you. And we're back, World of the Unexplained, tonight we're with Chris Roller, the man with godly powers, the man that sued David Copperfield and David Blaine for stealing his godly powers. If you're listening to us tonight on uh, KWSS 106.7 FM in Scottsdale, Arizona, there's a big shout-out here from the Wotu clan <laughs> uh, here in North Carolina. <laughs> the yeah, the Wotu clan. I guess, um, which, one is this, which one is ODB and which one's Redman? Apparently D wants to be ODB, ODB and okay. Chuck is red man because oh, he has yeah, red, red hair. <laughs> yeah, that's no, no surprise. Shoot. Okay. I, I don't know who I am. I'm not familiar with the group. Yeah. But anyway, regardless, uh, call us here, 877-722-7382. That's toll free even in Scottsdale, Arizona. 877-SCARE-U2. Give us a call and uh, you can speak live with us and with Chris Roller about his godly powers. Now, Chris, before we went on break, we talked about you having the power to um, to – immaculately conceived children and apparently you've been doing this for quite some time how many children have you immaculately conceived and where are these children where are they they're all, mostly most of them are in the u.s um i've been doing it since 99 and and um as far as do, do i don't have any proof of it you know uh-huh. um and, and, but <clears throat> to this one method i elusively method of, of proof i've realized it's over a million and I think at this point, over one million children. Yeah, well, it might be over two million right now. So that was. Oh, you've been going at it since '99. I'm, I'm sure it could be possible. <laughs> why, now, why, why are you, why are you populating the earth? <laughs> um, why, why am I doing it? Um, yeah. I guess to save, to save the, uh, help save the planet. <laughs> Okay. Now, 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 how many of these, how many of these pregnancies are carried full term? How many? I believe, uh, I believe most of them are. See, what happens is that they don't even know that it's mine, you know? They have, uh, most of them have a, a, a guy, a, a mate, a, a husband or a boyfriend, you know? And so they, they have a baby together, but in reality, it's your immaculate conception of that child. Yeah, and I slipped my sperm in there instead of instead of the guy they're with, and uh, they didn't even know. We have a caller. Yeah, uh, we, we do. Uh, <laughs> caller, oh, we're, 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 just give me a question. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Hello, caller. Where are you calling from? What's your name? This is Dale calling from upstate New York. Dale. Hey, Dale. How you doing? Man, I'm probably a type four as far as this guy's concerned. <laughs> well, now you're, you, you may be a type two because you've entered into the conversation. The bubble, right. I don't know. Chris, <clears throat> is he a type two now or still a type four? Type two. Oh, you're a type okay. two. Congratulations, okay. Dale. What's your question, First Dale? time caller. Thank you for calling. That's right. Um, my cre- question for Chris would be, uh, well, first I have to make a statement, then I'll ask the question. Fair enough. Okay. The statement will be this. Throughout human history, it's just been one continuous bloodletting, murder, mayhem, death. We are gripped in the hand of evil ever since we were created. And my question to Chris is, what is the point? Okay. Fair enough. enough. That's a good question. Um, Um... I was going to ask Jay the same thing. Uh, I'm not uh, God, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to ask him about his Savior, Jesus Christ. What's he doing for us, right? And I'm not exactly doing a whole lot of good either myself as far as saving the world with this, uh, what's, what's going on in the world. Um, I, I assume that's what the caller was digging at, the fact that... No, he's, you know, he's, still, he's still on the line with us. He can still well, hear you. That 
the world sucks, that's why I'm, what am I exactly doing that, that's, that's helping things out, or that's what you're saying, sir? Yeah. Yeah. What's the point? Um, He's making yeah, lots of babies, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe creating all these babies is going to create uh, heaven on earth by, if you will, uh, adding to my clan, if you will. If you will, <laughs> say, it's, say it's happening, and it, I eventually uh, can muster up enough... Uh, I don't know what you would call it, like family spiritual power, okay? Let's just call it family spiritual power. Thus, we can now enter a stage into which we can, uh, godly powers are more accepted, okay? I don't know, but right now the world really does suck. Um, I'm not exactly happy with it. I'm not happy with the war. Um, um, again, I... It's God's plan it seems to be in control right now, and for some reason... There seems to have to be this evil in the world, and um, that was your that was your question, sir. What's the point, right? Yeah, what's the point? What's the point? <clears throat> uh, I'm mean, gonna tell you, I ran the gamut of religion on my own. I was born Christian. I left it. I've come back. Amen, brother. I don't oh. have all the I don't have all the answers, and I, I'm just wondering. Maybe you have a little insight into what's really going on. I mean, you're making a lot of claims here, but I don't see any proof. Uh, I don't hear you say anything that really makes any sense to me. You know, I'm just a Joe Sixpack type trying to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, a lot of my website and most of my stuff teaches, it doesn't teach much about religion or it does teach about spirits. I've got some some stuff on there about spirits and how how we can... You know, well, you can't spirituality. mention God and not talk about religion. I don't know how you would separate the two. <laughs> We're going to get into that in a little bit, Dale. I'm putting my gloves on. Religion Maybe. is, yeah. <laughs> religion is, is, you know, I'm, I not. My mom didn't like it. And she, that's why she turned us off to it, um, because of her having all those kids in a short time, and, and she decided, you know, let's just not go to. She didn't raise us to go to church, so that's why I don't have much of a church background. Although I have attended some in recent years to. Uh, to well, I tell you what. How about using some of them godlike powers to get the IRS out of our pocket? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. That, that would God. really help most people in the United States, right, Jay? <laughs> Definitely. You know where I stand yeah. on those kind of things, <clears> Dale. <throat> okay. Yeah. Well, well I, Del- I think I'll I think I'll hang up now. Thank you. you thank you for the start. call. Appreciate You're it, Dale. Welcome. Call back anytime. All right, buddy. Bye. 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 All right, Chris. Yeah, now, this uh, bloody you, you picked the fight this time, so I'm going to have to get in the ring with you here. What has Jesus done for for this earth? That's a question. Yeah, well, I mean, he's your, he's your savior. What the heck is he doing? I'm, I, I, guess, I guess I'm not doing much myself, but. Well, you obviously you're staying very busy repopulating. <laughs> the, uh, uh, what about liberating us from? Uh... Uh, liberating us from our own demise. You see. If you look back in the Bible, and here's one of the historical facts that most people tend not to recognize. If you look in the book of Matthew at the beginning, there's a genealogy history there, okay? And a lot of people skip over these genealogies because they think they're boring. But it's very important. And I used to skip over them myself. It's very important because in this genealogy, it goes back and it shows you that not only was Christ who he says he claims to be, which was from, you know, he was a human, and you can trace back to David, but you can also trace back through all of these different layers, and they include women in these genealogies. That's something that at that time in history that was Hebrew text did not do. And the reason they did that was the point that this was a prophecy fulfillment, and this was scripturally uh, accurate. And it shows that, that we are from the seed of Adam, which is the, the book of Adam. There's only two times that these books are mentioned in the Bible, being in the book of Adam and being, uh, you know, the the... the the book of Adam is in, includes us human beings because we were born into sin. And what we need as human beings is to be saved from that sin. Now, my producer Chuck won't agree with this because he's a, well, he's a heretic. But we're not going to talk about Chuck right now. <laughs> He'll come around eventually, maybe. Um, the point is, though, this salvation that he promises us is a delayed salvation. The sin on earth was caused by us having this free will, and we chose to go against the things, well, just like children, well, we chose to, to, to disobey. Deviate from God's plan. 
and God's plan will be fulfilled, though. And if you look, and you can get a copy of my new book, The Great Deception, I'll be sure to send you a copy for free, Chris. Um, but if you, you, you look at that, you can see the things that are happening today. We're living in a new age here now to where these prophecies are getting fulfilled again in our own modern day times. And this proves more to the validity and more to the truth of what's actually happening. You can take it back and look throughout history and see the fulfillments that made Jesus backs up his claims to who he says he is, which he is the son of God. And you can also take and see everything forward in the New Testament. And you can see these things coming together today. One of those being, uh, you know, Israel becoming a nation in 1948. Proof. Well, one thing it, got, it, it definitely predicted was the fact that some guy would come forward saying he's the second coming. I mean, here, here he is right here. So you say you're the Antichrist now. I didn't, hey guys, don't jump on uh, me here. I've only called one guest the Antichrist. I, I was going to... I guess I'll go ahead and call you one too. <laughs> but uh, so, 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 but you, do you believe that you're the Antichrist then? No, I'm the Second Coming. Why does that mean I'm I'm the uh, Antichrist? <clears throat> that, I thought. No, I mean, I mean, uh, Second Coming. I mean, I'm the Second Coming of of Christ, if you will. I, I guess no, I'm not really. I'm not Jesus though, or anything. But uh, I'm. The then how can you be the Second Coming of of what? You're the Second Coming of some other deity. Yeah, I, I mean. Uh, I, I guess I guess I, I refer to it as Jesus was the first coming and I'm the second. But I realize when when you say second coming, it usually means Jesus coming back. Right. That's the only way I know it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you know, but the, well, that's what I'm saying to you, though, Chris. I mean, I, I I'm giving you the opportunity and the platform here to give us factual reliable data just like in law school what you're being taught there as a one L. You're being taught. I'm assuming this is your first year. Am I correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. As a 1L, you're being taught how to read cases, understand and digest the case law, and you're being taught how to argue. You're being taught... How to argue you, your point. Yeah, you, you have proof to back up each of these points in your in your argument. Now, and that's what I'm asking you to do here. If you are God, then where's the proof, man? The proof is in that... that Document from David Copperfield that he's got godly powers. But no, that's 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 that's, that's, telling David that's irrelevant. Has that's irrelevant done because godly powers, not you. The, the reason that would be irrelevant is because of the fact that we don't know how you know we we can't we can't prove that piece of uh, that document. For example, we can't say well how do we know that David Copperfield has godly powers because he says he does? Where is his proof? You see where I'm going with this? Again, David now, could have easily have said. What, what I'm doing is a joke or, or tricks or just... Yeah, well, what if what if David Copperfield just wanted to, to get a little crowd push from this? He wants a little fame going on, so he's going to say, yeah, buddy, I've got godly powers. Let me see how many people in the press latch onto that, and it's going to give mean, me, you know... How many of these tricks do you need to see? Watch David Copperfield, David Blaine, especially Chris Angel. How, how much do you actually need to see in order to understand that there's something going on? Well, I, I mean... For, First of all, I've never seen them. I've never seen them firsthand. But if you did see David Blaine up up close before he was big, I, I, no, I've seen I've seen David Copperfield's show twice, and it, he's doing it all right there on stage live. So what, what, what I'm saying though, well, Chuck, 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 our producer Chuck, has saw him. Did you see? Could you know how he did it? There was it? a guy I was there with. That, there was yeah, a guy I was step there up with. They claimed he knew he could see how he was doing. He was putting a cigarette through a, a quarter. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I mean, I don't know what I, what he was doing, but. I, Apparently, the guy look real to there. you. Did it look real to you it when you did, saw? It? I guess close up, but I mean, he had it held awkward, awkwardly, and okay, I got you. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, these guys though they make their living, and and no, no one believes that what they're doing is actually real magic. And if it were, and I'm not saying that it couldn't be the case, if it were, I would I would say that that person is probably demonically possessed, and that these powers are coming from Satan. Do you believe in Satan? Obviously, you believe in God. Do I believe in Satan? Um, well, uh, some people think I'm Satan. <laughs> well, I don't yeah. think you're Satan. I think no. you're lost. But uh, that, that's beside the point. <laughs> and I think right now some of the ideas yeah, that, that you're promoting makes you an antichrist, sir. But that's amount, okay. There's a certain I, amount of truth. I was kind of go, going into that direction. I mean, if he believes that he's God, then, <clears throat> you know, he has to also believe in the opposite of God, which is the force of evil running the show here on the planet Earth. You know, and um, one of the things that Jesus Christ did, well, fought the devil on a number of occasions in the Old Testament. I mean, in the New Testament. Whoa, sorry. Um, you know, I mean, have you had any experiences with Old Scratch, Lucy, as old I like scratch. to call him? 
the devil? What was that, what was that question? Have you had any battles with Satan? Have you had any battles with Satan? Well, I'm extremely poor, so in some sense, uh, whatever... It seems like I've had a bunch of people against me. I've had the mob. I called... It seems like, you know, I got the CIA watch me and FBI, but it also, I got some bad people on me, and, um, and they, uh... My experience, Chris, is if the mafia is after you, they take care of their problem pretty expeditiously. Yeah, they're, they're fairly <laughs> well, efficient. I'm, I'm really good at avoiding death. I, I've, I've actually gone to a mob boss and told them that you can, I bet you can't kill me, and you can't do it, so, <laughs> um, as part of, kind of wow. the proof, part of the proof I offer is that, uh, in, in my on my website there is that um, that I can go up to these guys. He even said uh, he was pissed off about David Copperfield lawsuit and because uh, I, I told him about it. And he's like, you know, I bet I could have ten guys on you in, in an hour. And I said, bull crap. And it turns out I'm still living to talk to you about it, Andre. <laughs> hmm. I'm wondering though if he if he didn't feel that feel the way one of your many psychiatrists have in the past and didn't really consider your threat that serious of a uh, uh, of a threat well well we've had to be talking since then but um, oh you, you don't talk to him anymore or you I, I don't talk to him anymore uh, he's we, we used to see each other at karaoke um, but um, I'm sorry you see each other at karaoke is that what you said we used to see each other at karaoke. Uh, well, so you know, I'm seen... sure mob bosses go to karaoke. Of course Come they on. do. Of course they I do. I would. Stuff. If I were a mob yeah, boss, I would it. be at karaoke. Well, me too, you know? <laughs> I'd sing show tunes just to freak people it's out. It's fun. Sinatra. It's actually, it's actually a major major mob boss's son. That's who it was. Okay. 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 Now, now, now oh, I didn't even know there was a mob in. Where, 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 was, where are you at? Minneapolis? Minnesota? I assume, I, I guess all major cities do have some, some form of organized crime, criminal yeah. syndicate. Yeah. Well, his dad was in New York, I believe, at the times when he's talking to me. Um... But um, yeah, he. Um, How does this go I, over I to, to the a, karaoke crowd, Chris? Do you tell I, them? I to, I'm sorry. The, the karaoke. When you go out and you do the karaoke stuff, how does this go? Do you tell them this these things? Do you tell them that you're God? Do you? And how do they feel about it? I used to be really um, forward about this godly stuff. I used to go around wearing shirts saying I'm God. <laughs> God, yeah. I wish I had a picture of that. <laughs> send me one, please. Put the shirt on and send the picture. I'll put it up on our site. It's on my website. Just look for oh, the word shirt. I didn't see shirt, that. And you'll find it. I'm going to go look right now. It's, it's, on, your, it's on the TrumanShow.com, MyTrumanShow.com. Look, look for shirt, and, you, and you'll see it. Um, okay. But, yeah, I'd, I'd walk around with these shirts, and, um, and this was really provocative to, uh, if you, you know, the, uh, a mom boss's son, and um, especially with David Copperfield. He's actually uh, he's actually partied with David Copperfield before this this son, and uh, he was a little pissed off that I'll sue him. <laughs> yeah, he's a fan of David Copperfield's then. Yeah, well, he's actually partied with him before, so twice or something like that. Yeah, so um, his name is Brent, anyways. Um, so anytime I anytime somebody wants to threaten me, I, I say you know bring it on, you know, and and turns out they the way it works is I'm in a bubble. I can't. I can't get this link to work, Chris, on your side. I see the link and I click on it, and it's just not allowing me to, to get the link on the My Truman Show shirts. Okay, I gotta update my perhaps my site. Give me a second here, but uh, oh, okay, sure. I'll, I'll work on it a little later. Okay. During commercial. Not a problem. Not a problem. But um, no, no. So, so he was he was upset about this because he's one of Copperfield's friends. Yeah. Okay. He's just unhappy. Uh, mm-hmm. The, the way I, what's I think what's going on is the mob, like, like the magicians have have my powers. The mob has my powers too, and they've been following me for many years now, since since eighteen or so, around when I graduated high school. Oh, what I'm what I'm saying it seems is, as though your power. If everyone, oh, if okay. everyone's taking your powers, yeah. why don't you take them back? Eight seven seven scare you too, guys. Call toll free. Go ahead. For some reason, these powers get granted. And what happens is that the mob gets the powers, and they said, you know, we got to keep this guy down. So my life has not been exactly a bed of roses, okay, up to this point. And I believe that part of it is due to the fact that I got an evil force bothering me, okay? That, um, uh, anyways, doing, I'm doing my best I can to figure out how to get them out of my life. But in the meantime, what they've been doing is hiding these powers, keeping money out of my pockets, they hide these powers in the form of magicians, 
They go around. They, I believe that chip manufacturing, this, in, you know, Intel chips, you know, they're creating... Uh, the RFID chips? Is that what you're talking they're about? Cre- they're, they're creating... Uh, you see how small these CPUs are now for these computers? Oh, yeah. They're creating, they're creating uh, 5 million transistors inside these little chips, all with the use of technology. Well, I say that that's probably, I'm taking a guess, but I'm saying that that's probably godly powers happening, making that happen. And the mob is selling this technology to, these, to, to Intel. I'm not saying Intel's part of this, but the, Intel buys these machines that do these things from a mob company. And and um, and this is uh, going on in this type of fashion throughout throughout the country and the world. Um, I also believe that like medical technology is, is helping out. Uh, for instance, the boob job when it occurs uh, on a woman, the, uh, the scars there should be a tremendous amount of scarring. Oh yeah. All, but I believe that magic powers heal are, the scarring from the breast uh, augmentation. Yeah, there there should be a big scar there. And so the medical community has some of your powers too. I mean, yeah, that, that's true. Uh, D made a good point here, and that that's that nowadays. Yeah, I, I've seen Doctor Nine O Two One O. As a matter of fact, I, I would really love to go to med school just to be able to do boob jobs. But that's just a, <laughs> that's a pr- I can fill that out on your wish site, right? Uh, no, anyway, the, the, the question you know the question I have, you know, you see that it's a very small scar now. I mean, apparently they just push these uh, these saline. Uh, packets in through this tiny hole and inflate it, right? Isn't that the way that works? They've actually, uh, you can watch it on, um, uh, um, well, on this, I forget what channel I got, I can't remember the exact channel. Um, no, 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 regardless, but yeah, you you can watch, I mean, uh, those are small scars, though, aren't they? I mean, in general? No, well, I, I had um, hair transplants done, and, um, you should see the scar that resulted in, in um, I have actually uh, the two scars that I, the person had done. Um, I had two, two separate procedures done. And it left uh, so hard of scars that people can't help but comment about it. And they, they wonder if, they can't believe I spent money on it in the first place. The, a professional doctor did this. and um, oh, Have you thought about it, suing him? <laughs> that was a joke, <laughs> yeah. but but no, seriously. And 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 on the other on the other hand, I mean, if you're 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 looking for a lawsuit windfall here, I mean, by telling people that you're immaculately conceiving millions of children each year, wouldn't that open yourself up for some kind of uh, class action lawsuit, perhaps? Mm, that's true. Well, again, I'm governed by the God's plan here, and that the, the, there's a prevention of. Of reality prevents Chris Roller from uh, the re- gaining the reality in which to f- fulfill that prophecy, if you will. Uh, no, no. Well, let me ask you now: if if someone were to to take the DNA of one of these children after uh, it was yeah. born, that that was one that you your sperm uh, uh, was slipped in there, supplanted. As you. The, 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 yeah, it slipped in. Uh, yeah. As you said, I mean, uh, is. It, would that child's DNA match yours, or would that child's DNA match the uh, person who they think is the paternal father of that child? Um, that's a good question. What, what's happening? I'm actually testing it out right now. Um, one of the people, one of these ladies, I call the the babes. Okay, is Celine Dion. Okay, and she is a babe, say, Celine Dion. Huh? She is a babe, definitely. Yeah, she's a, she's one of these ladies that um, that's set up to have my baby. And so what happened? So did you impregnate Celine Dion? I believe that's what happened. Anyway, so I'm testing out the theory right now. I've actually got a, a paternity suit against Celine Dion right now. Oh, my God. You filed a yeah. paternity suit against Celine Dion. I did. And how is that going for you? We're going to see how it goes. We're going to see how it goes. When did, you, when did you file it? It just got filed within a week ago or so. How much is this costing you to file all these lawsuits? Doing it myself is cheap, but uh, it's still, I, you know, I'm poor, but I got enough money to get me by that, hopefully, you know. Well, no, no, I, I'm just saying, I mean, what, what you're, you're filing this, I, I'm assuming, in federal district court. I mean, how much, what, what's your filing fees cost you? You still have to pay those, I know that. Yeah, I, I got to pay those, that's true. I'm actually doing it in Nevada court. Right now. Okay, and how much does it cost? I mean, just just for just. I mean, I'm I'm just curious if you don't mind telling us how much is it. No, cost? the servant and everything, uh, filing and serving, it's going to cost two hundred fifty bucks. Two hundred and fifty. I figured it was probably around that. Two hundred and fifty dollars, and then uh, obviously they have to answer the complaint. But um, wow, so this this was just filed, or has it been served yet? It's 
just being served right now. Okay, so she doesn't know about it yet, but she's gonna, she's going to. <laughs> or actually, her attorney's going to, and they'll alert yeah, her. I believe she knows all about me, and she's probably just waiting for this thing to. She's waiting for some. I don't know. I, the way I've, I figure she's known about me for for years, so I figure let's just let's just figure this out. You know, let's let's get to the bottom of that. I got David Copperfield to fess up. I mean, wouldn't it be County wouldn't Farm. it be better to, to 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 do these things the old fashioned way? I mean, I'm an old fashioned guy, and I th- I think it would definitely be a lot more fun. <laughs> I mean, why why immaculately conceive? I guess that's the question I'm asking you: is why do this immaculately when you could just do it normally? Um, I haven't had a girlfriend in years, so um, as you can imagine, this godly thing is not a. It's not attractive. It's not, yeah, it's probably yeah, not. I can a, understand where that's going. Now, if you did have the big cars and the big houses and all that other stuff, the godly thing might, they might just look over it just because, well, they're gold diggers. But, yeah. You know. Um, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a question from one of our, one of our listeners here in the chat room, and, and the question is this. Why doesn't Chris use his powers in a way that can't be related back to him? He could influence a scientist to discover a cure for cancer, or he could give a physicist the insight for cheap, clean, unlimited energy. What do you have to say to that? That's a good question. Yeah, it is. Well, and whoops, you still there? Yeah, yeah. My phone dropped. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, in some sense, a lot of what the what's going on in the world. I mean, picture what happened, what was in the world 100 years ago, and what's happening today. There's actually been just in the past 20 years, 20, 40 years. Uh, there's been so much change in the world. I mean, we have technology now has allowed us to have internet communication, um, you know, unbelievable speeds and stuff, cell phones, and uh, these things are happening. I believe that God's plan is, is making this thing happen. I believe that, if you know, if chip manufacturing is being handled by godly powers, in some sense that that person that asked that, I mean, indirectly, this is already happening. In other okay. words, the medical, the medical community is getting godly powers, and you know, scar removal. Some of the, maybe some of these instruments are 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 working via uh, godly powers, and it's again, it's very elusively handled, such that it's not. It, it, everybody says it's real, or it's just technology. They say the word technology, and we blindly say, "Oh, okay, it, that just works," you know. And same for uh, just name a technology in this world that's going on, and maybe, just maybe. Uh, it's got godly powers happening. I, I want to give an example with Google uh, that I I cannot believe this computer speeds are, are this amazing that can that literally millions of, in any one second millions of people millions of people can make a hit on a, a hit on their website oh, yeah. and produce an answer in within a tenth of a second without something going on. Okay, that's amazing to me. I'm a computer guy, by the way. I'm a computer engineer from uh, University of Florida and. And so I know computers like you and believe, and it's you have a good school, very good school. It's just it's just very hard for me to believe that computers are this fast, or that you can link up a network of computers that can work in tandem like this, this efficiently. Okay, so um, pick a, pick a technology, anything out there, and, and pick out anything in the world that's going really fast, that's moving really fast, like maybe your internet connection, and maybe, just maybe, there's something going on there. You know. Yeah. No, no, Chris, we're going to have to take, take a break, but right. hang tight with us for the last half hour, guys. Um, call in 877-SCARE-U2 or 336-996-1596. Every Halloween at midnight, the devil simultaneously appears in two places, the high plains of India in a quiet cemetery in Kansas. It's November 2nd, the Day of the Dead. Two federal marshals report to the small town of Shinbone, Kansas, moments after a tornado warning, to transport a prisoner with no past, no identity. He is known only as Sin Jin Smith, starring Roddy Piper, Richard Tyson, Jonathan Davis, Kevin Gage, Gary Casper, John Vilbin, Billy Duffy, Charles Cyphers, and Eileen Dietz. Check out the movie that critics are calling one of 2007's most anticipated horror films by visiting www.sinjinsmith.com. That's www.sin-jinsmyth.com. Sin Jin Smith is a Snapkick Productions film written and directed by Ethan Dettenmeyer. Coming soon to a theater near you. And 
and you're listening to World Unexplained. Chris Roller, give us a call, guys. This is the man with godly powers. Come on, you want to call this guy? Yeah, it's your 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 only your, yeah, your one true. and only chance on this show to talk to someone that claims he's God. That's right. At it's least one, so far. Right. One eight seven 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 two two seven three eight two. That's one eight seven seven scare you two. Locally, the number is three three six nine nine six one five nine six. Scott, you have a major announcement. It's the I same do. announcement that we It's made the same before. announcement. But but go ahead. Guys, we're doing a conference. It's called the the Out of Darkness Tour. Go to outofdarknesstour.com and you can purchase tickets there to this event. It's going to be on June the 9th, 2007. I'll be there. Bill Schneblin, the ex-vampire, will be there. Uh, John Zaffis will be there. The Wotu Gang will be there. Laura Placeris will be there from Full Moon Radio. And... Um, Teresa Bain, the author of Actual Factual Dracula, will be there. Um, Al Prophet, Dr. Al Prophet will be there. Thank you, Trent. Yeah. And, and many, many, many things we're going to be talking about. It's going to be an all-day event, June the 9th, 2007, in Greensboro. It's going to be at the um, the Best Inn, uh, Best Value Inn, I think, America. It used to be the old Ramada at the airport. All this information is available on the website, www.outofdarknesstour.com. You can purchase tickets now by clicking the left link that says Purchase Tickets. We must sell at least 25, or the conference does not happen. Uh, we have to sell 25 tickets by April uh, 29th. So please go sign up for this. Today's the first day the tickets have been made available, and uh, you can jump on and be down there with us. It's going to be a spectacular event. Tickets are $50 for the uh, regular admission and it's $75 for a VIP ticket which includes dinner with all of us wonderful people and um, it'll just be a lot of fun but anyway back to the show call us here 877 scare you too we're speaking with Chris Roller Chris I've been looking at your uh, t-shirts designs and they are they are quite um, comical the one uh, I think the one I saw here uh, I'm a stud without all the women <laughs> That's great. I'm fertile without all the child support. Even better, right? <laughs> so, uh, and you can, you can see these on his website, www.mytrumanshow.com. Uh, Chris, this is this is a uh, this is one heck of a website. It's huge. It's like uh, ninety thousand words. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. Why don't you just put all this down in book form? You could get this. Uh, you know, you could you could print this and sell this. Well, then I guess the site would be a, a lot smaller at that point. But. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> How many hits does your site get a day? Is it is it a, do you get a lot of traffic? No, really, I don't. Um, since it started, about about eighty thousand hits. So it's not oh. that's since since two thousand and two. So not that many. I am really surprised. Well, got most of them when uh, when I aired on David Co- the Celebrity Justice clip on with David Copperfield. Got most of them occurred then. Now, when, when was that? Back in uh, 2004. No, 2005. Okay. Now, th- your- now, have you spoken to David Copperfield personally, or are you just talking to him through his attorneys? Yeah, he actually called me. Um, when the suit started, he called me and said, listen, man, you know, don't do this, you know. He, he did say, I don't know, there was a reference to the fact that, you know, what he's doing is, you know, that what he's doing I can't do, and he was right about that. Um. But he was trying to talk me out of the uh, suit, and I was like, you know, man, I just want to see, I just want to see how it's done. He's like, you can't, you can't do what I'm doing. Oh, so you asked so, him to show you how he does these tricks? Yeah, that's that was that's what that's that's what I asked. That's yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what do, what do you, uh, Chuck? Is this yours? Yeah. Chuck wants to know um, how you feel about the smoking gun depiction of you on the Cartoon Network. Have you seen that? I've actually got it on my website. I made a link to it, um, and if, if it's the same, what what are you seeing? It's uh, basically their their smiley face, upside down smiley face, talking about the, the suit, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. He's shaking right. his head. Yes. Yeah. Uh, figured what I'll put it on my website in case anybody can't read the they have trouble reading. I'll just put it up there so they get you know get a visual of it. Well, that would, uh, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. So I mean you. <laughs> What do I? I mean, I mean, I, I guess he's giving me a hard time, but you know, that's that's just life, you know. That's, yeah. I've had, I've had a lot worse than that. Actually, you've been pretty tame so far to me. So I, I have been. I have been. <laughs> that's, that's true. Sky's been in in part because it, it just I I don't know what to say. I'm left with um, 
I am left with a loss for words. It's ineffable. I, I think I think you feel sorry for me too. So it's like, well, I do a little I, bit. I really do feel that you're lost, but you know, on social, this poor guy's on social security. I think I'll just leave him alone. You know. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's uh, it, I'm just I'm uh, yeah. I, I I don't know what to say. Like I said, it, it's uh, it's been. It's been strange. Yeah. Give us a call here, guys. Last last chance to call in here at eight seven seven scare you two or locally three three six nine nine six fifteen ninety six and speak with Chris Roller. Um, what have we not covered? Tell us something else about yourself, Chris. Yes, that, that maybe ahead. we haven't discussed. Yeah, go ahead. Um, that you want to get out there. Um. Because this show does get a, a tremendous amount of listeners and a tremendous, tremendous amount of downloads. So you, so your, your hits are going to increase after this, I guarantee that. <laughs> more than likely, anyway. I can't make any promises, but more than likely, uh, I know definitely that you'll get heard by a lot of people. You're, you're getting heard by a lot of people now, but you're going to be getting heard by a lot more on our, on our downloads. I know that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I guess I can... Spiritual... I guess when I, this is called spiritual sex, when I, uh, this is how they, they first, the CIA first caught on me, I, I, I was interested in this chick, lady, and, uh, in, when I joined the Navy, they weren't aware of me until I joined the Navy, and then what caught, what the, brought them on to me was the fact that I, I, I masturbated to a lady, and, uh, she felt it. She, she felt it. it? Yeah, she actually reported, like, some kind of rape thing, you know? And, did she uh, did she take you to did she try to court martial no, you for this? This is this is really any unreal. This, I've been told all this to you psychically, okay? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that the anyways. So they um they do some experiments, they actually did a reversal where she masturbated to me and I did I felt it too. And they they caught me masturbating to it. That's how they realized that it was reversible too. Uh, kind of weird, but anyways, it was so. It's uh, I if I put people into a link, if I if I could put a circle of ladies into the link, and if I have sex or masturbate to them, then they all feel it. So it's kind of weird. Wow, that's that's <laughs> that is a godly power. <laughs> yeah, right? I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh! <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how to. Uh, how do you I even, even know respond how to, to that? I don't even know how to write you up on the on the guest sheet when I when I'm talking about oh, wow. what the show was about. I'm I'm there's just too much. Yeah. It, it would be a book in itself. Yeah, it would this be. Is, oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> is this how you immaculately conceive these uh, babies? No, no, that just that just sort of happens. So um, you don't, you don't do this through masturbation. Then. All right. No, great. See, this I, just I, happens I, in your I, mind, I, I, or I'm sorry. This just happens in your mind. I mean, this is how does your sperm physically get? And I mean that would take a lot of sperm. Wouldn't that we're be about really, six, really draining? You know? I mean, wouldn't that really, really, really? Well, yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. We're talking about millions of children. Yeah, here. I, I mean, is this drain you? I mean, I guess that would be the the word I would use. Um, some, some people think I'm like Lucifer or Satan or whatever, and I'm spawning my evil spawn by doing this, you know. And they think that actually, you know, like somehow in this other dimension, you know, getting up on top of the lady and doing it, you know. And uh, you know, so I got I got all kinds of rumors, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine so. Yes, that's uh, it's, it's, I, it's stuff I've never heard before. <laughs> yep. Every now and then, you get a guest that comes along and tells you something you've never heard before, and I, you've done a lot of that tonight, Chris. I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> but you're thinking that these immaculately conceived children may one day uh, change the world for the better. Do we wait? Uh, wait, wait a minute. Did, uh, did we ever that, get? Did we ever get an answer to that whole DNA thing? Oh. No, I guess we did. Chris, did you ever? Did, he was working on it. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. He's, he's working, working on it. Yeah, okay, okay. Never mind. Thank you, Chuck. Good one, Chuck. That's why we pay you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a lot. I'm just kidding. Money we here, right? We put him back in the cage after the show. Are you checking on Celine Dion's kid or what? No, <laughs> no, no. But I am. I am very uh, curious as to how that's going to go. I'm sure you'll get some press. Yeah, out of that. That, that, that definitely is press worthy. I don't think sure. uh, this is this is uh, you know I, it's something big. I definitely think you'll get some press out of it. <laughs> I'm hoping so. I I'm hoping to. Geez, I hope I get some kickbacks from the some some from some talk show that gives me a little bit of money to live on here. God, I'm dying here. I know. Uh, D wants to know if if you think this Celine Dion thing may hurt your chances for candidacy as president in 2000. Oh, that's true. A scandal. As oh, a I've got so much dirt on me. I mean, <laughs> dude, I've Oh, 
Yeah, I've actually, uh, yeah. No, I've got so much dirt on me that that's nothing. Um, I mean, what, that I've been con immaculate conceiving that, that that's deception or something or what? That was, that was... I, I, I have no idea. I don't. I, don't I know. would say I would say it's it's better to be talked poorly about than not being talked about at all. That's true. I think that's Oscar true. Wilde said that. Yeah. And, and a lot of other people. And but, we're type two now. Yeah. We've moved up. We were hey, type four. You know what? And and yeah, that's true. We're, we're getting titles bestowed upon us. Chuck, I mean. he's still type four, though. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I talked to him at the top of the show. Yeah, yeah you did talk to him at the top of the show. You're type two. All right, D, you're, you're, type you're type four. Still type four. You're still type four. That's all right. Anybody can visit. Uh, if they want to visit Chris's site, please check it out. It's mytrumanshow.com. That's uh, mytrumanshow.com. And you've got some other sites, too, don't you, Chris? Yeah, uh, freakinggeek.com. I've got uh, actually kind of a, my legal site, which is eventually going to be my my firm is going to, it's actually bendemover.com. Bendemover.com. Yeah. Bend, that's B-E-N-D, the letter M, over, dot com. So it looks like yeah. bend mover. The dualism is, is bend and mover. It's, all, it's got a, you look on the site, it's kind, of, it's kind of a joke site, but it's uh, bend, the law offices of bend and mover. Oh, uh, right. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to pull that up right now, but it's not popping up for me. It's not popping up. What is the deal? I don't know. I'm, I'm just having problems in the night on the internet. It's because of those viruses. Oh, those viruses. Yeah, it probably is. Probably is. <laughs> you and your did you fall for those scams? Did you fall for <laughs> the Nigerian money scam? Too? I didn't. No, I, I don't. I don't fall for any, any emails coming to me saying I have an inheritance. I automatically um, send them to uh, to the phishing attack office at, at Google. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that'll show them. That's right. That'll show them. So, if you're out there listening and you want to try to catch us in some kind of money scam, don't e way don't email us. That. We'll, we'll we'll get you. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we're like a shark in the pond, <laughs> Chris. We're, we're going to give you a final word here before we we're, yeah. before we take off here. So what what do you got for us? Well, I um um oh, good question. Oh, <laughs> well, pray for me. Hopefully, I I, I plan on it. <laughs> pray that I get some answers and uh, and uh, pray that I run for president of the United States because I think I'd be better than anybody else out there. I honestly think you may be better than who we have in there now. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be more like pray to you? No. Oh, God. I'm just uh, curious. I mean. No, because he's not God. Oh, he just has God the, the power. The God. I'm sorry. My fault. I, I clearly All right, Chris, dropped the ball there. Thank you so much for being on World of the Unexplained. I hope you have a wonderful night, and we definitely need to have you back sometime in the future. Okay, Jay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Have a good it's night. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. And that was uh, Chris Roller. The music. No, nah, you don't need it. We got 10 minutes. Well, we'll just sit here and talk well, for a okay. bit. That was. Uh, <sighs> wow, what did you guys think of that, huh? Yeah. That was my, <laughs> my comment right there. I'll do it again just in case. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <sighs> Wait, follow it by the Chewbacca impersonation. No, I'm not going <laughs> to do the Chewbacca Come on, person. one more time. No. Man. We, we've no. only done it twice no, on the show. That's right. It's a rare thing. I keep it. But this has uh, been a rare. Uh, this has been a rare show. It's, yeah. I, I don't want to. What am I? Some kind of performing yeah. dog? You know? Oh, you know. Look at me. I shake my paw. Oh, I'm such a good boy. Look, I bounce a chew bone on my nose. How about that? Oh my no. gosh! This is a, the Chewbacca impersonation. It will. It will come out next Halloween. <laughs> next Halloween. Yeah. No, no. You know, no it's some other random time, but now is not the time. I feel it. Oh, I want to tell everybody this. Next Halloween, we're planning on this. We're, we're, we're hoping for it. Now, we want to. Uh, we want to broadcast live next Halloween. From Sleepy Hollow in New York. Oh, That's something man. we've been talking about for a long time. Yeah. We think it'd be really cool. Headless horse. What do you think, D? I like it. All right, he likes it. But we can all I just pack up Chuck. Pack up, pack up Chuck. <laughs> God, I know he hates that. <laughs> Get him in the cage and we'll, we'll put him in the back of the truck. <laughs> just pack old Chuck up. He'll be uh, playing a piano with a, a tuxedo saying the world's fattest vampire or something on it. I'm sorry I robbed that from someone I know and uh, I apologize. I just stole your idea, but now a lot of people heard it. His idea was the. Dress up in a cage? <laughs> Dress up in a tuxedo, playing a baby grand piano, uh, playing Meatloaf's I Will Do Anything for Love with the placard saying World's Fattest Vampire. He might make some money with that. Yeah, he might. <laughs> he really should He he really should try that. If he's now, listening tonight, he knows who he is. Now, guys, uh, we're, we're going to make a big announcement probably pretty soon. 
And um, that's cool. You guys will hear about us. Uh, we've got a really, we think we've got a really big station uh, locally here that's going to start carrying us. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, that won't be a live deal. Uh, but, you know, hey, that, that's just going to increase uh, our exposure in the local area. Yeah, spreading our tentacles. Yeah, and, and, so and that's, that's a good thing. But we'll, we'll talk about that when we know more. We should know something more tomorrow. And uh, I can talk about next show. That's true. But right now, but not for this now, show. not this show, but for now, the best thing to talk about here on this show is the fact that the Out of Darkness tour is coming soon. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's going to be in Greensboro, June the 9th, 2007. Get your tickets now, guys. Trust me, the $75 ticket will be worth its weight in gold. Where else are you going to assemble the finest minds in the paranormal world all at one dinner table with yourself? Really? Where are you? Nowhere. That's right. That's right. John Zaffis, Bill Schneblin, me, you, Chuck, D, Laura, Teresa, Al, Al everybody. <laughs> it's going to be crazy, man. We're going to have a crazy time. And, you know, you can just talk about whatever's on your mind. and It's just going to be such a nice uh, atmosphere. If you're staying at the hotel, um, don't make your reservations yet with the hotel. And like I said, we have to sell at least 25. Otherwise, we're not having it. Right. But if you do stay at the hotel there that, that these people are going to be staying at um that i may or may not be staying at i'm not sure because uh, i live so close to it but you know if, if you are staying at the hotel it's only going to be 62 dollars a night that's a special rate so when you make your reservation make sure that you say hey you know i want the out of darkness tour discount that's 62 dollars a night um fly into the greensboro airport there the gso is the call letters of that airport i mean it's really close to the airport as well oh gosh that is the next show isn't it taps Jason Hawes next week. Holy crap. I better call him. <laughs> I better call him because he's got so much going on, man. He might forget. That's I true. You better, you better. So yeah. I will try to get a hold of Jason uh, this week. You know, and make why, sure why don't we just run through the guests that we, we've got? I don't have a laptop. Scott. Oh, poor thing. Man, you better just, you better just knock it off. Pal. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me see. I don't even know who. You, you want know, a biscuit? January. You, you, <laughs> January, you has been, January has been the craziest month. We've really had some. Some, some, real, some really crazy guest on this it's month. Been I mean, great. it has been January has been definitely something strange in in, in woe to history. It has. Well, I mean, you and know, we, we, uh, we run a paranormal talk radio show, Scott. I conservative mean, it, paranormal, paranormal talk. But you know, you would assume that strange things would happen a lot. It does. Lot, Jason yeah. Hawes next week after that. Molly Stewart. Oh, you owe her one. That's true. That's and, true. Uh, we're going to talk she about hooked her us tour. up. She hooked us up in Salem. So. The next uh, February fifth, Dennis Spalding. I'm gonna I'm gonna break bad on him because he thinks he communicates with his son through numbers. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Jerry e. Smith returns. <laughs> yeah, we hadn't seen old Jerry since last year. His new book, Weather War Weather. Ah, ah, ah. That's great. Weather Warfare: The Military's Plan to Draft Mother Nature. I like that. The military's plan to draft Mother Nature. The military's plan. And then guess who's coming back? Bill. Bill. Bill's coming back. Bill Schneblin. He has a lot of stuff to talk about. We didn't. We didn't cover. We didn't like, touch. It. We didn't cover like a ten tenth of it. A, a hundredth of we it. We tried. Really. I mean, that was anyway. But go on. Pre-record on the February the twenty-sixth. Wish me well, bar exam for the third time. Yeah, that's true. You want a biscuit, too? I want a biscuit, too, yes. <laughs> uh, Pastor Harry, I don't know. I've got to get a hold of him because he hadn't sent me any of the things I've requested. So I don't know if he's still interested or if he's, you know, I don't know what the deal is. Um, As you see, there's not much Yeah, there's there. nothing there because he hadn't sent me anything. Right. Life After Life, Dr. Raymond Moody, March oh, the 12th. Oh, man, that's a, that's that's a, a big heavy, That's a heavy hitter. That's heavy. Yeah. That is. That's a great guest, and I, that's going to be an honor to have him on. March 19th, Randy Harrigan, a friend of mine from the UFO store. He's going to talk about uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, March 26th, Angela Moore, the only psychic that I actually put any kind of credibility into at all. Psychic. The hillbilly psychic, yeah. And she's really awesome. She's got her own radio show on WWNC in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, called. You, you have listened to it? Yeah, I thought it was cool. Yeah, she's yeah, awesome. Yeah, she is pretty good. Pretty great. And then uh, Dr. Cyril Wecht. Oh, my gosh, Dr. Another Cyril. Another heavy hitter. Yeah. He, is, uh, he was the man that was on the, uh, the, the uh, House Senate Assassinations Committee that looked into uh, the death of President John F. Kennedy, and he believes that it was a cover-up. Um, he's done over 14,000 autopsies, and he's either reviewed, supervised, or consulted on approximately 30,000 additional Man. post-mortem <clears throat> examination. Talk, about, talk yeah. about your street cred. Oh, he's got talk his about JD. Any kind of cred. He's got his JD and his MD. He actually teaches at both law school and at med school at Decane. Man, I'm really looking forward to that. That's 
And I think he's still the uh, medical examiner there in uh, Pittsburgh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he's uh, he's done the autopsy on Elvis Presley, Jean Benet Ramsey. Uh, he's done a lot of uh, very famous cases. Are we going to be able to do that in two hours? Probably not. No. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but his time's very valuable, and uh, he's, we uh, appreciate him. We do. Um, he also did. Uh, looks like he 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 did the autopsy on uh, one of the Waco Branch uh, Davidian people. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, and, and he's also covered. Well, that's so, somebody we need on the show. We need somebody from that cult. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, first of all, you do it by not referring to him as a cult. Yeah, I know, I know that. But yeah, no, 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 no. that's, that's a good one. Are. Insert foot into Mal J. Scott. Funeral registry. Really? Yeah. Let's let's track them down. Yeah, hit the music. That's good. Let's track somebody down from the Waco Waco lot and get them on. You know, Waco. Texas. I do think that they were that that, that the government came yeah, in too soon and really I, screwed. I agree. I, do. I believe. Uh, Waco is also the. But uh, I still think they're the first place of Dr Pepper. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah. That's why I'm so crazy about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dr. Pepper, we're crazy. It makes you about crazy. <laughs> I don't know. You know, yeah, oh. I'm pretty sure about that. April 9th, E.P. Grandine or Grandine, um, he's got a book. Uh, I told you a little bit about him. I need to get a hold of him for some info, but he wrote that book about the civilizations and things like that that you're into. <laughs> you, know, you know, all that stuff I don't yeah, read. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. that stuff. Um, Very cool. April 16th, Teresa Bain. Terry's going to come talk about us. Actual Factual Dracula. Trent, you would really like this book. It's well, really good. Well, I'd love to read it. I'll it's on my, it to you. It's on my queue. Yes. Um, April 23rd, Linda Alice Dewey has been confirmed now. She's going to talk about some crazy psychic stuff that we're going to make fun of her for. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> April 30th, May 14th, May 21st, May 28th, they're to be announced because I've got one guest that is just really, really not responding to my email the way I want him to in a timely fashion that I've, I've held these dates open just to get this one guy because he's really good. I'll talk about later. May 7th, John Daniel, he believes that the Catholic Church is behind the, um, the Antichrist and a bunch of other stuff. And I've spoken to him on many occasions. He's in West Virginia, mm-hmm. and it's a really, really large volume that he sent me in the mail. So we'll talk about that. We've got about 25 seconds, though. I'll just sign out now. This is Jay Scott, your only JD DJ on World of the Unexplained. And this is Trent Lackey. We're coming to you from Kernersville, North Carolina, a small town where we talk about big things. Chuck, we out.